right, five minutes after 11 o'clock. One of the things that I have a front row seat to is an educational opportunity. And I have learned so much from this man, Dr. Riyad Fakhoury, that I don't even know. If I was to list the things that I've learned from him, I don't know that I would have enough ink in the pen. Uh, this is the show that he hosts. It's called the Head to Toe Care Show. And Dr. Fakhoury is a chiropractic orthopedist. Those two words together mean good things for all of us. He's also the owner of Fakori Medical and a chiropractic center where there are other doctors with other specialties and he's been educating this us about these things for so many years now and uh, it's just such a great resource we have in our community. Good morning, doctor. And by the way, listeners, you're all welcome to call the doctor. This is uh, a live show and that's your your role is important. The uh, phone number is the WOCA Climate Control Source Hotline 622-9622. Thank you, Doctor. Did I do something? No, no, I'm just uh, 622-9622, that's right. Oh, yeah, the phone number, (laughs) yes, yes. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Larry. How are you? Good. This is uh, kind of not a swan song, but you're going to take a hiatus after today, huh? Yeah, summer with some conventions and activity. We'll take a little break. And uh, and uh, in the meantime, if uh, as we were talking before the show, some listeners will have questions, and they're welcome to call the clinic directly or call here, and then we'll get those questions answered for them. Yeah. But you know, you you mentioned a very good important, uh, very important point, Larry, and that is when when I'm giving a talk or a discussion, uh, we do a lot of safety talks and a lot of uh, maybe community service discussions, teaching people how to take care of their spines one on one, either as a group or or individually helping them to take care of their back so they have less damage in the future. And so the the time that, that those folks learn the most is in the question and answer portion. Mm. I'll go through my information, but really when they come in with their own personal questions and they say, I'm experiencing this or I have this, what, you know, can you explain that to me? And uh, so I you know, welcome calls coming in because that's where the, the real information right, right. sets in. And may I give a little example of some how interesting the body is? Of course. Uh, there's a gentleman, very nice gentleman, Bob. He's the plumber. Huh. <laughs> Bob the plumber. Ah. Very nice man. Wonderful individual. And, um, and a real hard worker. So what happened, Bob saw me yesterday and asked me a question. He said, uh, you know, Dr. Fakuri, I hit the side of my shoulder. And ever since then, my hand has been numb. And, wow. And it, it, he he waited a week thinking it would go away, right. but it hasn't gone away. He said, "How? What is the relation between my outer shoulder getting injured and my hand going numb?" And so it was a very interesting question because he he bumped his shoulder just directly into a wall or or something oh, directly man. into there. So the injury was to the shoulder, but the symptoms are in the hand. The shoulder is getting better. The hand is numb. So what we had to do is explain to him that. When the impact occurred to the shoulder, the force went into the neck and into a socket behind the collarbone, which this little fossa, this little opening, has the has a nerve called the brachial plexus nerve, which is a bundle of several nerves that feeds the whole hand. Now, if he was numb in his first three fingers, it would be his neck. If he was numb in his last two fingers, it would be his lower neck, his mid-back or his elbow. Oh, wow. So by just asking him a couple of questions, we can very quickly discern where the injury is as opposed to just chasing after the pain. So I explained to him we really don't need to do anything with his shoulder. I palpated his neck, and sure enough, he has a lot of spasm in his neck and a lot of swelling behind that collarbone and that little fossa or that little opening. So the pressure is occurring to his brachial plexus, which is a very important nerve that controls the skin and the muscles of the entire hand. And since he's complaining of all five fingers going numb, now we know that it's it's directly behind that collarbone, the brachial plexus. So our goal will be to do some massage therapy, do some alignment, get some stretching, and uh, and he should recover very well. But it, it was interesting that he asked. He pointed to the shoulder, yeah, yeah. but it ended up being a neck surge, a neck, uh, that, a neck problem. That, that is absolutely one of the things that we've learned from you over the, all these shows that you've done. I, you might recall early on in our relationship, I told you a story of how I was carrying some equipment, some heavy equipment, f- felt in my back pull because well, I was in a hurry. Right. And then, like, the next few weeks, I had the two, uh, the pinky and the ring finger of my right hand numb. To the point that when I played guitar, it was the weird sensation was that it felt hot. The the touching the strings felt hot, like a heat, right. heated thing. It was weird, and 
And I remember you explaining the connection between the back and the hand there. Right. It's interesting. That, and, and the body is a puzzle like that, but it's also very understandable if you know how the pieces come together. And it, and it makes sense. This is why we see people who are in different types of trauma or accidents, and they may hurt one part of their body, but the pain may be somewhere else. And another example, yesterday, uh, a provider was telling me that her heel goes numb. And uh, both heels actually go numb. She's very active, and she's experiencing numbness in the heels and oh, asked wow. where that could be coming from. Well, uh, since it's not from her, coming from her back, because it could have been her low back that was causing a sciatic pain in the heel, but that's not the case. We checked her back. Her back is clear. So the, 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 the numbness that she's experiencing is because of an inflammatory process, swelling in the heel, and we found out it's because she's pronated or flat-footed putting more pressure on that heel pad, causing it to swell. So today she came in, we, we've casted her and fitted her with orthotics, uh -huh. and in about three weeks she'll get a custom pair of orthotics that will roll the weight out to the outer part of the heel, which can handle it much better, and that should take care of her problem. And she's had this all of her life, and it just started? She's had this for maybe progressively increasing over the past six to eight months. And uh, she was afraid because her father has spinal stenosis ah. or a closure of the canal where the spinal cord is, uh -huh. putting pressure on the canal, making both of his legs numb. So she was afraid, of course, that it's the beginning oh of yeah. numbness of her right. legs, and she was asking, "Is it hereditary or not? Is it? Is it? You know, it will will this I carry on so. from one generation to the next generation?" And the answer to that is, it's the spinal stenosis is not hereditary unless there's some anatomical problems, but mostly because of arthritis and wear tear of the spine, where we're not taking care of our spine properly. When, when, I st when I was assuming she had it over, I, I meant the flat-footedness. The flat-footedness she could have had for a years, long time. Years, years. Yes, that flat-footedness has been there for a long time. But it doesn't sometimes affect, uh, as far as feeling pain, until what? Until there's maybe the last straw or something? Is it? That's right. And, and the body will, will, will handle stress very nicely for a long period of time, send you little warnings that there's a problem, and if you ignore those, finally... <laughs> that'll give you the, the 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 big symptomatology or the the severe pain or the severe numbness that will bring the person in so we yeah. as human beings know something's not right but hope that it'll go away and usually those problems don't go away but they manifest themselves in a bigger problem right. later on yeah. which is the impetus that usually brings the people into the clinic for you know, questioning, why is my arm going numb? Why do I have headaches? Why is my neck bothering me? And and then at that point, we could we could research, evaluate, diagnose, uh, X-ray if necessary, and treat that patient. And if it's something outside of the office, refer it on to the right uh, right physician. And that and that plays right into sort of what I said in the intro. Uh, the things we've learned from you, and, and the one thing that. You know, the, I think the big thing is never wait more than three days. Three days is your maximum. But then beyond, underneath that one, that's in big bold. That's like the headline of the story. But underneath that was this whole idea that the work you do as a chiropractor can relieve pain, which is like one extreme, or numbness, which is the love, the lack of feeling. And the same thing could be causing either. That, I, that's a fascinating lesson that you've taught us. Right, and, and when a nerve gets involved... You get the, the terminology is called paresthesia, which means that, that it's abnormal or unusual sensation. And some people will feel it as a pins and needles. Some people will feel it as a birding, like you did with your fourth and fifth finger. Right, right. Uh, numbness and tingling. Uh, it could be uh, little spasms of the muscle, fasciculations we call those, or little twitching of the muscles. Uh, when you start experiencing weakness, it, it could be numbness also, but when you start experiencing weakness, that's urgent. You must get in because weakness means direct pressure on the nerve and probably damage that's occurring to the nerve that's irreparable. We need to take that pressure off. Well, and comparing our bodies to a car, if you have that slight noise under the hood and you wait, it'll, of course, become something serious. 
Right. If you have a slight tingling or a slight numbness, it could be it could progress to be something worse. And a good example, if we're going to use the the car, is your your brakes squeak a little bit. It's a little annoying, but you can manage. Yeah. And they squeak a little annoying, manage a little bit more, and eventually the squeaking's all the time. You take it to the shop, they take the tire off, they say, well, you needed brake pads, and now you need a new rotor because you damaged it. Yeah. And so. We see that that happens with individuals, too, because they get the warning signs, it's ignored, and then later on, the problem doesn't really go away. It just sort of manifests itself as a bigger problem later on, and then finally coming in to get that looked at. And we see that quite often after trauma, whether it's a sports injury, with golfing, with swimming, with working out in the yard, or immediate sudden trauma like a car accident, an injury, where where things are are stretched, things are pulled, things are torn, there's swelling in there. And some people say it's a little stiff, it's a little sore, I can wait it out. But the problem is that the mechanics of the spine has been injured and the way the spine functions is not, not like it used to be. And that will take its toll and give problems later on. So getting it early helps us, number one, to diagnose a problem because it hasn't spread to other parts. Number two, it's a, it's a new injury, a new problem, so it's easier to treat it than if it's a chronic older problem. And by the way, just to, to connect your show with John Fuller's show, because he's an attorney, a car accident requires both of you. And and a lot of times, especially with the stupid 14-day law, a lot of times the pain doesn't even show up until uh, some time has passed. I don't, I don't know if 14 days is right, but it just seems like sometimes we we don't even know. It, and it is, per, it is person to person. That's yeah. why... If if there's a trauma, whether it's sports, whether it's auto, whatever it might be, get it checked out because we can tell very quickly if there has been an injury or not. Uh, you may not perceive that until later on. It might be six months before you start realizing the problems that you have. Here's a perfect example. This is a, a gentleman. He is a, a representative for a, a large company that sells medical supplies. So he deals with people every single day that are having back problems, inserting medical equipment into people to help them with that. Right, so right. he deals with people with pain. He was in an accident one year ago oh, wow. and sort of lived with the pain until he came in this weekend, but did not really associate the trauma with the pain didn't have any problem before but ever wow. since then he's been dealing with it so even somebody in the medical field didn't really perceive and connect that until it got to a point where his headaches were more severe his neck pain was more severe his right. upper back pain was aggravating him so he came in and history showed us that the, that the cause of the problem was that trauma so now it's chronic it's one year old so it's more difficult to take care of it so if somebody's in an accident, leave it to a professional to determine if there's been an injury or not. Take care of it early on. If you wait the first three days, you probably won't feel anything at all. And initially, they, instead of the 14 days, they were trying to make it a three-day law. You will not feel... Holy mackerel. Yeah, yeah, for the first 70 to 48, 72 hours, your body produces morphine-like substances, uh, endorphins and such, that help block the pain. So by the fourth, the fifth, the sixth... The seventh day, the pain starts crescendoing, and um, and uh, will you know will progress from there. If, if somebody has been in some kind of a trauma and a bone has been fractured but not put out of line, will it? He and they don't get attention. Will it heal normally, or what happens there? You know, that's uh, that's good good question. In that we had a patient coming in who was in an accident about a week and a half ago. Uh, the emergency room did a wonderful job. Uh, Dr. Shanawani noted that there was some pain in the foot that the patient was complaining of. We took an x-ray, and on the long bone, of, long bone of the foot, at the very end, there was a transverse fracture, and the bone was shifted a little bit. Oh. Now, that will probably heal on its own, but the problem is it may not, and that's, then you get what's known as an ununited, uh, an ununited fracture where the two pieces don't join together, uh, and that becomes a joint and arthritis sets in there, and at the end of the foot, at the big toe, that could be really problematic. So what we did is we referred the patient on to a podiatrist right. to evaluate that, and they'll probably pin that. They'll probably stabilize that. So sometimes the bones do not shift and their their approximation is good. 
and you can leave them alone, tape it up, or, or in the shoulder sometimes just sling it and let them heal on their own. There's other times that you have to make sure that that bone will not shift during the healing process, break the, uh, the callus that's forming, and, and cause a shift, which at that point then will, will need immediate surgery in, in many cases. So at times we'll refer those fractures that are more complicated to the orthopedic, and, and they'll usually uh, pin or they'll use a plate to stabilize and hold those two bones together so there's no shifting during the healing process. When somebody has a broken bone and they have a cast and there's atrophy, is that the word, to the, yes. to the, to the muscles, does... Um do they benefit from massage? Do you, or does that just come back on its own once the cast is off? Or what are your thoughts on that? And is there something to do while they're in the cast? Well, not much. There's not much no. they can do because the cast is made there to immobilize the joint so it can it can heal, or the bones so they can mm-hmm. heal together. So let's say it's uh, you, you've seen that right angle cast at the elbow where right. where the people can't bend their elbow. So when the cast comes off, then their elbow is bent and they can't straighten their arm. And the bicep muscle, tricep muscle, forearm muscles, they've all atrophied or gotten smaller in size. So that needs rehab. That needs some therapy. Why? Because we need to bring the motion back into the joint because yeah. there's adhesions. The muscles have shortened. So we need to lengthen the muscles, bring motion, let the joint relubricate itself, and then start giving exercises to build the muscles back up again to a full strength where they're at maximum. So uh, a scenario would be that if if the cast comes off and they don't get the shoulder to the elbow to move, then that elbow might be in a frozen position or have limited motion in the future. The muscles may always be contracted and tight, and you may never get full strength of the muscles. So it's good when the cast comes off to encourage the body to to bring motion back in and to strengthen the muscles so you could be as close to 100% as possible and not heal at 60%, for example. Does, does massage substitute for exercise and specifically, I guess, for the person who's paralyzed and can't exercise? Uh, massage will help in stimulating the nerve endings and keeping a good communication between the muscles and the nerves will help to elongate and and stretch the muscles out, break little spasms and trigger points that are in the muscles from lack of motion. Uh, but some of the other things forms of treatment that could help those people that have uh, limbs that are not usable is to get the the rehab where we're actually stretching and moving, elongating the muscles and the tendons so that way they don't contract and get tight and short. And uh, and the second thing is electrical stimulation. There's actually a machine that we have. We have low-volt galvanic, high-volt galvanic, muscle stimulation, interferential therapy, Russian stim. Those are different types of stimulation that will activate the muscle, keep the muscle alive so that way it just doesn't uh, atrophy. Uh, The phone number right now, if you would like to call Dr. Ficori, is the WOCA Climate Control Source Hotline, 622-9622-WOCA. Remember, Dr. Ficori is taking a hiatus, so in the coming weeks, if you have a question, you'll need to call Dr. Ficori at his office. And, and of course, we'll mention that number. Let me mention it right now. We'll do it again at the end of the show. It's 351-3413. And, of course, you can always go down to Dr. Vicori's office. And, and many people do that on a daily basis. People will wake up with pain or there'll be a trauma that happens that day, and they'll call the office. And, and Larry, we at the Vicori Medical and Chiropractic Center want to make it as easy as possible for that patient. We're, we'd like to be as service-orientated as possible because medicine has drifted away from being service-orientated, and now I feel like it's starting to come back in that direction. And... When that patient needs something, we want to be available for them. It doesn't matter what time, what day, what incident. We want to get them in, evaluate them as quickly as possible. Start the healing process because when you're in pain, it's not fun. It affects you. It it really just right, right, right. It, it just throws your whole system off. Get back in shape as quickly as possible. And also, a very thorough evaluation up front will let us know what the problem is will let you know what the problem is and the best course of treatment. It may be at our office. It may not be at our office. Uh, so we had a patient that uh, she was in a motor vehicle accident, and uh, she's having extreme pain in the low back. She's taking some types of medications for that that were prescribed by the emergency room. 
but she's having a severe bout of constipation, no bowel movements. Oh, and so, wow. And that's not something that we deal with. However, there, there are medical Probably providers. Probably was not easy for her to tell you about that either. Yeah, well, you know, patients... They feel comfortable with us, yeah. and and they, they're 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 open to let us know their problems because they know the more we know, the more that we can help them. That's true. And so what we did is quickly, immediately sent her from our office to a specialist to be able to evaluate that to see if the medicines need to be changed or if there's another cause for the lack of bowel movements. It could have been a twisting of the bowels. There could be so many different things that could happen. So, again, not every patient coming into our office can be can be treated by us the majority can but the ones that can't we get them where they need to go as quickly as possible and is there um, um, a nerve or neur- neurological um, connection sometimes with those organ functions that you, you just talked about? you are right there are because those nerves go to every part of your body every every single part of your body is supplied by the nerves and where do the nerves come from the the brain to the spinal cord and they exit out of the spinal cord through little foramens or tunnels and they go out into every part of your body every organ skin muscle is contacted by a nerve ending because that's how it stays alive that's how it functions so if a vertebrae shifts out of position if the muscle is tight if the disc uh, protrudes or is bulge, it can interfere with that nerve and whatever that nerve is supplying will have some type of potential of dysfunction. And and many people who've experienced low back pain know when they're having low back pains that does affect their ability to be able to have normal normal bowel movements, for example. So that's a secondary reaction to uh to a low back problem. So in this case this this uh lady's condition it's it's very probable that she has a disc herniation in her low back. That could be affecting the nerve, which could be affecting the bowel movement. However, we don't want to take any chances. Let's make sure that there isn't anything yeah. else. Yeah. Co-treat, get another specialist to look at her, and then make sure we're on the right track. And they contacted me today and said everything was clear, so it's it's not a it's not an organ problem. Oh, okay. So so now it's back in your court. Exactly. Now we know so it's more of a nerve. Okay. Okay. And so you actually have to now now that you've gotten that part out of the way. Yes. You can now take it take them there exactly and oh wow we do an MRI she's scheduled for an MRI of the low back make sure that this is not herniated if it's herniated uh, how is it affecting is there weakness in the leg is there atrophy you remember we talked about weakness is is a is a, a very important sign for us um, and then what are our options from there if she's not responding to conservative care does she need to be evaluated for a possible epidural? Does she need to bypass that, go directly to the surgeon? Uh-huh. You know, there's so much that happens in our in our flow chart or our algorithm of treatment to be able to help that individual as safely and conserv- conservatively as possible. Wow, you're going to get a call one day. It worked! <laughs> and you can say, thank you, yeah. let me know. It is very exciting because you, you see such positive changes in yeah. people. So when somebody's coming to the Fukuri Medical and Chiropractic Center, I would say 9 out of 10 people will have a positive response and a good change from their very first visit. And uh, we, we like to check on our patients and see how they're doing. And, um, and, and the response is very, very favorable. So... Combining the rehab, the massage, the chiropractic, the medical together uh, seems seems to really be a, a a good solution to help people with their complaints of pain or injury. When when somebody and we had this experience the other day, we uh, were with some World War II veterans, and apparently one of them had an, an injury from the war, which is what sixty something years ago, that he basically has lived with the the intermittent, I guess is the way to say this, pain that occurs in his back. And he says, um, because he was having a hard time sitting in the in the seat at this at the Appleton, right? And and he said, well, it'll it'll go away in three days. It always does. I, it flares up and it goes away in three days. Well, gosh, to live with that for sixty years, every every now and then, there's pain that he knows will go away in three days. Is, yes. is that? I mean, does is he sent? Uh, obviously, he's up there in age already. But I mean, could could he have done something about that years ago? He he and he can. 
and he can. Believe it or not, he still can. There, uh, one one provider sent her father, and he is ninety two, I believe. Wow. And could not play golf because his back is bothering him so much, and it's an old problem. It is chronic. He's the same thing. Very chronic. And we put him on the table, stretched his back, used the activator, wow. everything very gentle, light massage. Yeah. Three visits. Golfing, no pain. No way. I, I tell you. Wow. I tell you. So when people say, I have to live with it, yeah. sometimes you don't have to. Within two to three visits, we'd like to see at least a 50% improvement at the Curry Medical and Chiropractic Center. So we put a guideline of where we want to be and what, what is our goal and what is our, what, what is our direction. And if we see that it's improving on schedule, wonderful. If it's not, then we're reassessing what other options we have. This particular man was a, a prisoner of war, and I think it was his daughter who was telling me about the three-day thing. So I thought of you right away, and I thought, well, your rule is if it hurts for three days, come in, but his goes away at three days. But it, but it shows up yes. like all of his life. But it's reoccurring. Yeah. So the fact that it reoccurs every month or three months or six months, yeah. something's not quite right. And it could be something with posture. It could be something with exercises or stretches. Yeah. Sometimes the solution is very simple. We have one gentleman that has calf pain. He likes to run miles and miles. Oh. And, uh, and it's, it's basically we just had to give him some stretches. That's all he needed was to stretch that calf muscle so he didn't have uh, recurring problems. That, that, that running thing is something my son is getting into now, by the way. Oh, He's getting into to doing the, you know, the 5Ks, and he wants to do some half marathons. Good and for him. So he's yeah. stepping it up then. He must get it from his mom. It's not from me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, we're going to miss doing the show with you for sure. So you I look forward when we get back. We're we're going to have some obligations throughout the summer, and we look forward to coming back in and and uh, and possibly even intermittently with some breaks in between time. Well, that would be great. Uh, and in the meantime, we will come visit you. The Fukori Medical and Chiropractic Center is located at. I'll let you do the rest. Sure, of it. it's uh, on 17th Street. So as you're on 17th Street, crossing 441, going over the bridge at the bottom of the bridge, tan building on the right hand side. You come to the bottom of the bridge, there's a light. Make a right, right. Brings you right to us. Our office number is 351 3413. That's 351 3413. Option 4 will take you to the front desk or our patient care coordinator, Amy. Answer whatever questions you have. Um, Set up a time if you'd like to come in, get evaluated, and uh, and of course, if you're having a problem, if you're having pain, if you have questions, if you've been in a trauma accident, if you do an activity and it bothers you, don't let pain be a limiting factor. Don't let it interfere with your quality of life. Be sure to follow up on it. Look into it and find out what might be the problem. It could be a very simple solution. Yeah. Uh, thank you for all you've done for all of us. Thank you. And continue to do. Thank you, doctor. Thank you very much, Larry. Appreciate we'll it. Take a little break, and we'll be right back. Are you experiencing pain in your neck, head, or back? Have you been in a recent accident or injury? Get your questions answered by me, Dr. Riyad Fakuri, board-certified chiropractic orthopedist at the Fakuri Medical and Chiropractic Center, here on the Head to Toe Care Show every Wednesday at 11 a.m. to answer your questions so you can get the help you deserve. That's Dr. Riyad Fakuri on the Head to Toe Care Show every Wednesday at 11 a.m. on WOCA, The Source. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Life jackets save lives. Where at Florida? A mix of sun and clouds today and rather breezy at times with a stray afternoon shower or thunderstorm. High 84 along the coast, 90 inland. Partly cloudy later tonight. Low 68 in a few inland spots, but 77 right on the coast. Tomorrow, partly sunny and breezy with a shower or thunderstorm.
allowing police to use driver's mobile phone records against them only when texting causes a crash resulting in death or personal injury. The bill's sponsor, Senator Nancy Duterte, a Republican from Venice, has said that could help to defend the law against privacy concerns. The ban covers tablet computers as well as mobile phones, but excludes using a talk-to-text feature. It also allows texting while stopped at a red light. The bill allows the use of phone records in defense against a ticket, but some phone companies' records don't differentiate between manual texting and talk-to-text messaging. A first violation is a $30 fine plus court costs. A second or subsequent violation within five years adds three points to the driver's license and carries a $60 fine. Calling Michael Malilo a liar, a federal judge sentenced the former lawyer to more than 24 years in federal prison yesterday for his thwarted plan to kidnap a wealthy elderly Palm Beach County businessman for a $20 million ransom. Malilo's own words sealed his fate when federal prosecutors played for the first time in public secretly recorded tapes of him demanding a ransom during a phone call with a tearful woman he thought was the victim's wife. In a chilling tone, he threatened to terrible violence if she did not meet his demands. Malilo is 51 years old and from Palm Beach Gardens. He did not know at the time, but the woman was an undercover FBI agent posing as the victim's distraught wife. The FBI turned the tables on him after Malilo told his girlfriend about his grand plan to kidnap an acquaintance. Malilo had suffered a few hundred thousand dollars worth of losses in illegal high-stakes poker games that Malilo came to believe the man had rigged. Senior U.S. District Judge Daniel T. K. Hurley said he was disturbed by Malilo's plan to commit a brutal kidnapping and bewildered by the lack of explanation for why a man who was once a New Jersey lawyer and lived for 50 years without running afoul of the law could go completely off the deep end in such a terrible way. The judge found that Malilo, who acted as his own attorney after firing two lawyers who represented him, lied and perjured himself during the sentencing hearing. And a team from the University of Florida is flying to Moore, Oklahoma to study the damage caused last week by a massive tornado to learn how to protect people here at home. Dr. David Privat is an assistant professor of civil and coastal engineering at the University of Florida. He traveled to both Joplin, Missouri and Tuscaloosa, Alabama after last year's deadly string of tornadoes. Yesterday, he left Gainesville once again to assess storm damage, this time in Moore, Oklahoma, the town ravaged by last week's massive of EF5 tornado. Privat says he will survey the damage left behind to understand how buildings can be engineered to withstand future catastrophic events such as this one. Privat hopes that anything learned from this disaster and more can be applied here in central Florida to strengthen buildings that may be built to withstand a hurricane, but not necessarily a tornado. And those are the headlines from the source, WOCA 96.3 FM and 1370 AM. Habitat for Humanity of Marion County is a ministry dedicated to improving lives by providing affordable and decent housing. Help them help others by visiting the Habitat for Humanity Ocala Home Store on Northwest 27th Avenue. To schedule a donation, give them a call and they'll come and pick it up. For more information, visit HabitatOcala.org. Habitat for Humanity of Marion County. Building homes, building hope, building community. Call me crazy. Some people say insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. I think insanity is 1,000 single-sided, full-color business cards for 15 bucks. Our packing service for 50% off. Call me crazy. <laughs> Regency Printing, on the corner of Northeast 25th Avenue and 24th Street, 789-6683. 